The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Say out loud, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son you of rose God. From the dead. Cleanse me with your blood, and I am born again. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. Rabbi Kurt Landry is with me today on the program. It's going to be awesome. But first, I want to say thank you for being my partner. I mean it. Thanks for being my friend. I pray the Lord today will bless you richly and the anointing of God will come on your life in a mighty way. We are going to pray today that God will heal you to completely and totally. The rabbi is a messianic Holy Spirit. Repeat what, what you said about yourself. I love that. Oh, Holy Spirit, tongue talking, prophesying, signs and wonders, rabbi. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Rabbi, today we're going to talk about a lot, and at the end we're going to pray for our precious people to be mm. healed by the power of God. And if you have a word for them, please feel f free to share it. You're wearing the talith, and we're going to talk about prayer today. But I want to ask, why the talith? Why is it so important to a Jewish man to pray with this? Well, we are commanded in the scripture to wear these, but realistically what they are is they're, they're a banner. You're, you're wearing uh, the sovereignty of God. So, so when we wrap ourselves up in, in this, it's a, it's a tent. In fact, the word talit means little tent. And it's actually it's, uh, like a portable tabernacle. Well, well, when did all this start? I mean, when did it begin that the Jewish people began wearing it when they pray? Uh, that's not, uh, in Jesus' time, uh, they would wear tzitzis. They would wear like, uh, like an underwear, like a t-shirt that had like t uh, tzitzis on it, the strings, these, these strings here, which are the most important part of the tallit. It's called a tzitzi. Why? Uh, it's called What a, does it mean exactly? Uh, it means fringe. And, uh, and then the actual tallit in Hebrew, the reason it's important to the meaning is that the tallit, tzitzi, you know, every, every Hebrew word has a numerical equivalent. Yeah. So this is 600. So the, its numerical equivalent, the word tzitzi, fringe, is 600. And then you have eight strands, okay? And eight, pastor, is new beginnings. And then you have five knots, grace. So you have a total of 613 is represented here. Is that in the Bible where you find the, what, how to, to produce it or how many uh, strands and so forth? Or is that some rabbi who came up with it? Uh, this, is, this will come out from a rabbi. It's, it's a symbolism. We are commanded in the Bible to wear the tzitzis, but not the way that it's tied, not the symbolism. I mean, I'm glad I'm asking, even though I know what the Bible teaches, just for your information, because people are probably wondering. Oh, and, and this is the, relationally, you and I, as a pastor and a rabbi, this, talking about this with, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I mean, why would the woman with the issue of blood grab the I was going to ask you that early, yeah. Why? And so there's a reason. And So when she touched the hem of his garment, in fact, I heard Catherine Kuhlman teach on this, that she actually touched this and yes. was healed. Yes. So talk about that. Okay. There's 613 instructions or commandments in the Bible. This is symbolic in Jewish culture of all of those commandments being fulfilled. So the woman with the issue of blood, as we know that she had a disease that she could not go out into the street. She heard that Yeshua the rabbi was was coming down the street, she went out at all cost, at all cost. And it's interesting, I don't know how deep we want to go with this. Oh, but please, I want to go deep, you okay. bet. Okay. Um, she, she had had the disease for 12 years, Pastor. Right. She had spent all her money. Uh, she was without hope. So now she's going out into the street, and it's like, if this doesn't work, then they're going to stone her based off that culture. But what happened is she was at 12. 12 is the number of government. And by the way, the reason, and he just said something important, that they would stone her, because anyone with that disease was forbidden to be in public. It was like leprosy. 
mm -hmm. uh, she, she, she could not socialize with people and so right. forth because in the Old Testament it clearly states anyone with that kind of problem had to be in isolation. So she came out really by faith, knowing that she could die for seeking her healing. Yes. So if I, if I could say it this way, she tried everything, everything from 1 through 12 for 12 years, and nothing worked. But on 12 is the biblical number for government. Government means authority. Total authority was walking down the street. Oh, my Lord. So she understood that. Yes. Total authority. She understood. He that. was on his way to Jarius' daughter, who was about to be 12. See, so there's something about this 12. And so what was happening, this was a day where, where Yeshua, Jesus, was establishing his governmental authority over sickness. You know, you're saying something very powerful and prophetic, that when she said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, she understood she was touching his office. Yes. That is awesome. Because what did, his, this, what did he say? He said, who touched me? Well, you know, this is a string. If you were walking even through the airport at LAX and, and someone touched the string with you, you wouldn't feel it. Because what happened is his authority from within, he said, who touched me? He said, I felt power. I felt power leave me. So what was happening is the woman's faith touched his authority and power went out. And, and the scripture says, Pastor Benny, it says, and her issue of blood stopped immediately. And the reason it stopped immediately because now his blood took over. You know, you're saying something very powerful. Precious saints, he's saying something awesome. When she touched his authority, that's why when we pray in his name, we're using his authority. The anointing is in the office of a man of God, mm -hmm. and the anointing was in the office of Christ Jesus. So today, when we say in Jesus' name, we literally step into his office. Yes. And that's what the Father's released. Yes. And all of his names, all of his authority. And actually, this is actually not eight strings. If I Can I go deep? Yeah. This is, this is really, it's four strings that goes through this aperture, which is a place where there's light. Narrow is the way, pressured is the gate, and few that find it. So when the four goes through this side, then you have four and four. Four in Hebrew is creation, Dalit. You and I are a four. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and us. We enter in, we are twisted in to his three-stranded cord. That's what Jesus prayed. He said, Father, let them be one as we are one. Listen, I heard earlier from you, and I can see why, that people are healed when they wear this and pray, correct? Is that what you said? Um, can I share a testimony with Please. you? Please. Okay. Well, uh, the reason I say it is because I, I really feel something from the Lord here, but go ahead and well, say I it first. Well, I think someone needs, to, someone needs to hear this, Pastor. Please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, the man that films uh, our our television, his name is Kevin McAvee, Veritas Films. And uh, so he goes to Israel, he's producing with us. And um, he called me up one day and I could hardly recognize his voice. You've had these calls as a pastor because you know, we're pastoring a church as well. He calls me up and he says, he says, Rabbi, he says, I need your help. I said, what's going on? He says, my mother, uh, she's older. She was just diagnosed with four stage uh, cancer and they're sending her home to die. She's not afraid to die. She's a Baptist. She knows Jesus, but she's traditional Baptist. And he said, would you pray for me? And I said, I'm going to do more than that. And I said, Kevin, I know you're a traditional Baptist, but sometimes, and like the woman with the issue of blood, you've got to come out of the house and you have to grab the authority. So I said to him, I said, would you just do this? I'm going to send you a tallit. It's one just like this. They're made in Israel. And basically, this is symbolic of his authority. I'm going to send it to you. And what I want you to do is I want you to go to the hospital and, and I want you to wrap your mom up in the tallit like a pajama. And then I want you to take the tzitzi and wrap this around her fingers like this and tell her that the Lord's taking over now because he won't let go. Wow. I said, because now his authority is holding on to her because she has held on to him for all these years. And then I said, I want you to take some uh, anointing oil and just anoint her head and by faith decree that she's healed. And so he did that and then she got worse. And then a few days go by 
and she's released from the hospital, totally cancer free. God. This has been now, I don't know the exact time, but over like probably two years and she's still totally cancer free because, and we have so many testimonies, Pastor Benny, but it's just a point of contact. It's, it's a point of identity. Just, um, um, can, can, I, can I share about this with prayer, I wish you would, yeah. prayer for your people? Because, Please. you know, you don't need to just have this when you're sick. This, this, this is a tent. Here's, I just preached this at House of David in our congregation. And you'll be familiar with this. This is Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says, but those who wait upon the Lord, and you know as a pastor and, and as a minister of a large ministry, it is very difficult for us as men, type A like we are, we want to get things done. Yep. Very difficult to wait. But the scripture says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And I'll never forget when Kenneth Copeland was teaching, I was there. And he said, eagle wings, the bone structure is different. He says that when an eagle actually lifts up its skeletal wings, it actually locks into place and soars. And it's not having to soar based off its muscle. It is literally made to soar on the wind of the spirit. So he says, they shall rise up on those wings. Well, also pastor, the talit is referred to as the wings of the Lord. So then it goes on. Oh, wait. It's referred to as the wings. Yes. The talit is the wings. These are the wings. Of the Lord. Uh, yeah. These are the wings of the Lord. As you can see, these are the wings. Who says that? This is just a translation in Hebrew of this wow. scripture. Like in Numbers, how beautiful are your tents, O Jacob? It was talits, not tents. They were under their talits praying. So when. Wow. It's a, it's a, and it's under the shelter of his wing, and his wing is his tent. This is, the, this is symbolic of the tabernacle. Uh, j just to keep going with this, without the tabernacle, there's no sacrifice. Without sacrifice, there's no redemption of sin. Without the redemption of sin, there's no protection because the wages of sin is death. Exactly. So this is something I would recommend to your partners and your family. They have the Talit on. They can put it over their head, and it says they shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Now, what do you do when you're under the prayer shawl? You pray, okay? Correct. So you're under the prayer shawl, but what else do you do? You make decrees, proclamations, put God into remembrance of his word, supplications, whatever, travail, whatever. But let's just use decrees for an example. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord because they're under the tent and now, okay, so now the believer is under the tent and he's waiting, okay? He's waiting under his tent. He's making declarations and decree. Father God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, Lord, in condemnation, I have the right as my inheritance to condemn. Lord, I dismantle, cut off all words spoken against me, my ministry, my family, and all of my friends in Yeshua's name. I cut that off. Now, I'm still under the tent. So now, while you're under here praying, then... Psalms 103.20 happens. Outside the tent, bless the Lord all his angels, angels who excel while you're hiding in the tent, who excel in strength to do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord all his host, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord his works in all places of his what? Dominion. All places of his government. Four plus four coming through. Eight, eight new beginnings. Three-stranded cord. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Four, eight, twelve. Twelve, perfect government. The God of the universe, whose the earth is his footstool. Hide up under that authority. Decree what you need. Wait while the angels go out and perform the blueprints of the words that the Spirit and the river within gives you to speak to the mountains. So there's tremendous power praying under this. There's tremendous power, not in the cloth itself. No, of course not. But in the symbolism of it, absolutely. I was in Jerusalem a few days ago. This is 2013. This is November. You're seeing this a few days later. And I was just there. And I saw hundreds of people praying with the talit. I don't know what it is, but dear God, you could feel the power of God there. You know, they're not saved, they're not 
born again right. people. I went over to the wall and I put my hand and I prayed. I could feel God. And you know, it's puzzling to me like, how can I feel the power of God here in this place with all these people who are not saved, but there is people. And I really tell you, I mean, even the people who were with me, we walked away and some of them were shaken up. They said, you could feel it here. I said, yeah, it's God's house. Mm -hmm. But you see hundreds of rabbis and people wearing the talits everywhere. Yes. Well, men and now women, when they have their bar mitzvahs, boys and girls and bats mitzvah, the first thing they do is get a talit. You know, you go back to the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. What did he say? Daughter. Daughter. Yep. He's saying, daughter of Zion. Betzion. You have a covenant with Abraham? Of course. You are now well because of your faith. That's why I called her daughter law. Well. Yeah. But when he went to Jairus' daughter, he didn't say daughter. He it's said, Talitha. little girl. Yeah. Why? She didn't have her bat's misfa yet. So what happened is she, the woman with the issue of blood, had to go. She was responsible. She had to go after the authority. But the little girl had the authority come to her. Excellent. Rabbi, I'm really enjoying you. This is powerful stuff. You really, you're enlightening me. You're, you're, so much you're saying this is really connecting in my heart. It's really precious. Bless your heart. Wow. Keep talking. I'm loving this. Well, I am, I, I am honored to be I here. feel the anointing with you. I really do. And what I feel from the Lord, I really would love for you to pray over these talith. I'd love to send you one. And you have oil from Exodus 30, like the real anointing oil. Yes. That I want to talk to you about in just a little bit. But keep, keep teaching on the Talit, because mm -hmm. wouldn't it be wonderful to have people get this and get healed? Yes. Well, you know, we have um, everything in the anointing multiplies when it cross-pollinates. And when things cross-pollinate, that's what's happening with you and I right now. You and I are touching and agreeing that these talits that are going to go out and this oil is going to break the yoke off the people's oh, lives. And um, there's something about the power of agreement. There's a power when, when Jews and Gentiles come together, one in Messiah, it activates the anointing of God that he talks about in Ephesians where he says it's God's intent to make the manifold wisdom of God be made manifest on the earth through the church to the powers and principalities and the heavenly host of dark places. Um, I was just doing a conference and there was a lady there and her name's Virginia and I was in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Virginia was sitting on the front row of the church and she had yellow in her complexion. And I, I, I stopped preaching and I came down to her, Pastor Benny, and I said, um, there was about probably 200 people in the meeting. And I said, Virginia, are you not feeling well? And she says, yes. I said, what's wrong? She says, I, my right kidney is, is failing. And I said, okay, you need a new kidney. So I said, okay. Can, can I pray for you the way I know how to pray? And she said, yes. So I took my Talit off and I put it over her. And I said, this is like a real estate sign. This house is sold. Wow. This house is sold. No longer belongs to whoever was here before. It doesn't matter. Sold. Now, the Lord is going to send the sheriff into the house to clean house. Because when the Son of Man, when Jesus said, who do men say I am? To Peter, he said, he says, you are the Christ, you are the anointed one. So now all authority is with him. And he said to him, he says, I will give you authority. Well, this is authority. So now I hung this on Virginia and I said, okay, now the house is sold. Now, every sickness that is there, that right kidney, you are no longer welcome in Virginia's house. You don't belong to her. I bind you and cast you into the lake of fire where you cannot attach yourself to anyone again in Yeshua's name. So now the sheriff is coming and kicking out the trespassers. Get out, get out now. But then it says what you bind in heaven. So I said, Lord, that new kidney for Virginia that's in heaven, we bind it from heaven like FedEx. We bind it, send it down into her body. Now, her color changed right there. And I know I'm speaking, to, I mean, you understand, you're in the, your ministry, you have miracles everywhere. But this little church in Arkansas, she went from yellow to nice peachy color. And then she came to the service that night and she said everything was working well, listen, we're almost out of time. I want you to pray right now, and I want you to 
talk about this oil too. This is from Exodus chapter 30. Mm -hmm. The actual ingredients yes. from scripture are in this oil. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like you to talk about the oil. And then I want you to pray that whoever is sick and gets this talith in mm -hmm. this oil will be healed. I'm serious. I really feel that. Okay. Go ahead, quick. Though. Okay. I, I'll go quickly. In Exodus, you know, mm, you know, the enemy's a robber. And one of the things he's a robber of is through religion, he'll, he'll, he'll steal keys and he'll steal power. Anything that has power. This Exodus 30 here, it says, And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil uh, to me throughout your generations. And then it goes on. It says, It shall not be poured on man's flesh, nor shall uh, you make any like it according to its composition. It is holy unto the Lord. And then it says, verse 33, Pastor, whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, that word outsider translates in Hebrew unauthorized, shall be cut off. But in verse 31, he says, I'm commanding you to use this oil throughout all the generations. Now, in the book of Revelation, it talks about us. It says in Revelations chapter 1, verse 5, and he has made us kings and priests to his God. So therefore, as priests, we have the authority to put this together. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, his father said he was not only well pleased, but what happened is he was baptized, and you'll know this, at Gilgal, where the 12 stones were. His temple, John, had to baptize him because his temple had to go down, so to say, under the water, say thank you to the 12 tribes, but now resurrect the order of Melchizedek. Rabbi, listen, we're almost out of time. I want you to pray over this and over this. Just look. Just put your hand on the bottle and put your hand on the, on the talith. And let's believe God that everyone that will receive this will be healed. Go ahead, pray. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, with the power and the authority of that name, because you are Lord. Jehovah Rapha, you Lord. are Jehovah Jireh, you will heal and provide for all people. We Lord, we Lord. release your anointing to break the yoke off your people and set your people free. Lord, we agree with the words of Moses and we decree, let my people go. We thank you that by his stripes that you are the healed and the delivered of the Lord in Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. Stretch your hands towards the camera with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, the rabbi and I believe right now for healing mm. to come to every person watching the program. Lord, let your healing virtue flow through them in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. Heal every person calling on the name of Jesus for your sake and glory. Amen, amen. Dear God, I feel the anointing here. hear. Precious people, listen. Make sure to get this talith and make sure to get this oil. The anas will, will tell you how you can get both. And I'm telling you, there is an anointing on this man. And when you lay this on someone who is sick that you know and love, I believe God's going to heal him. Amen. And, and we've just released the anointing as you touch this talith with the oil that is of the ingredients of, of the Bible from Exodus 30. Yes. You released it by faith already. Yes. So every person that'll, that'll get this and this, they're, they're, they're going to see power and authority and miracles. Yes. And they don't need to be afraid to touch the oil because they are kings and priests. They are qualified. The oil, the oil when it says, uh, it's in Hebrew, it's kadosh. It means to be separated. So when you anoint yourself with oil, what you're saying is, I don't belong to anybody else but God. I really want you to get the talith and the oil that is made from the directions of scripture. Listen, I feel this in the spirit that the Lord is going to do some powerful things with you when you get these. Here's how you can get it. I'll be right back. This talith or prayer shawl is a beautiful symbol of God's covering over our lives. Made in Israel, it can be a powerful point of contact for releasing the promises of God for healing, salvation, prosperity, deliverance, and restoration. And Rabbi Kurt Landry's CD teaching on the Talit message is a guide to understanding how the history, spiritual symbolism, and use of the prayer shawl applies to Christians today. 
The Talit and CD can both be yours for a gift of $85. And this fragrant anointing oil, which has been created from olive trees in the Holy Land in accordance with guidelines and instructions found in Exodus 30, can help you realize the promise from Isaiah that burdens will be lifted and yokes destroyed. To educate you on the biblical origins and significance of the anointing oil, Rabbi Landry has written this brand new book, The King's Oil, which explains your authority and rights as a believer to the benefits of anointing yourself, family, loved ones, and others. This bottle of fragrant anointing oil and the book can be yours for a gift of $45. And now, through this special television offer, you can order the prayer shawl, CD teaching, anointing oil, and the book for the low price of $120. That's a $10 savings. This offer will only be available for a limited time. So call or order online today. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Now that you have the, the knowledge of what this can do, imagine the power it will release in your life. Invest in your future. Invest in releasing the authority of God on your life. Get these. I really feel this from the Lord. You're going to see a tremendous release of the anointing as you pray with this talith and anoint yourself and loved ones with this Bible anointing oil. Get it today. Don't miss the program tomorrow. An amazing program. You know how I know it? I know it in the Holy Ghost. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. We know God hears our prayers and answers them. Pastor Benny's evangelism and healing ministry takes him around the world. But he has made it a priority to spend time in prayer for you. Send Pastor Benny your prayer requests and let him come into agreement with you. In addition, the ministry staff will pray for you before your request is sent to Israel, where for 30 days, the saints in Jerusalem will agree with you. So write today and come into agreement with him for your needs to be met. believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth, the gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. Pastor Benny Hinn is passionate about reaching the lost by obeying the mandate for all believers to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm talking about souls, Save my soul. men and women Save my around soul. the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. Jesus came to give his life for men and women. And for me and for you to have the privilege to tell the world. Awesome.